There are two videos circulating online right now that have robotics engineers simultaneously excited and terrified. In one, a humanoid robot performs kung fu moves with fluid coordination that looks almost natural. In the other, a robot gets repeatedly kicked, shoved, and knocked to the ground, and keeps getting back up like a mechanical Rocky Balboa that refuses to stay down. These aren't CGI demonstrations or carefully edited marketing materials. These are real robots, operational right now, representing two fundamentally different philosophies about how humanoid machines should work. And the implications extend far beyond impressive YouTube clips. Tesla's Optimus just demonstrated movement quality that looks closer to human timing than anything the company has shown before. The robot mirrored a human partner, entered fighting stances, and responded to simulated attacks with visible coordination between upper and lower body. Meanwhile, Unitree's G1 took the opposite approach. Their demonstration wasn't about elegance or choreography. It was about punishment, resilience, and the kind of robustness that actually matters when robots leave controlled laboratory environments and enter the chaotic real world. But here's what makes this genuinely fascinating. These two robots represent competing visions, not just of robotics technology, but of entire industrial ecosystems. Tesla represents America's vertically integrated, AI-first, Polish before release approach. Unitree represents China's open, iterate in public, flood the market and improve strategy. Both are valid, both are advancing rapidly, and both are on collision course to define what humanoid robots will look like, cost, and accomplish over the next decade. What follows isn't just a comparison of two impressive machines. It's an examination of competing philosophies, hidden vulnerabilities, global industrial strategies, and the uncomfortable question of whether the robot that moves most elegantly or the robot that survives the most punishment will ultimately win the race to reshape manufacturing, logistics, and potentially every industry that relies on human labor. When getting beat up becomes a feature, Unitree took a approach that seems almost counterintuitive for a product demonstration. They spent the entire video abusing their robot. Engineers pushed it, kicked it, and knocked it down repeatedly. And the G1 kept bouncing back with what the company calls anti-gravity mode, a marketing term that obviously isn't literal, but the results speak for themselves in ways that matter far more than elegant choreography. The G1 anticipated impacts, shifted weight distribution before hitting the ground, and rolled out of falls with movements that look disturbingly human-like in their instinctive quality. Every time it got knocked down, the robot analyzed its own movement patterns, found balance points, and stood up without any external assistance. This isn't parlor trick robotics. This is the kind of resilience that actually determines whether humanoids can function in uncontrolled environments. What makes this possible is how deeply Unitree has optimized body control systems. The G1's frame is densely packed with sensors, depth cameras, LiDAR, and torque sensors across the joints all feeding a control loop that predicts how to brace for impact in real time. When a shove arrives, the controller calculates the optimal way to absorb force rather than trying to lock joints rigid and resist, which is how humans actually handle unexpected impacts. The robot bends knees, spreads legs for stability, and rebalances itself exactly like an athlete recovering from being pushed. This is precisely the kind of capability that factories and field operators desperately need. Robots fail in real-world deployments not because of weak AI or insufficient programming, but because of broken balance loops or lost footing during unexpected disturbances. A single fall can mean human intervention, operational downtime, or even permanent hardware damage. The G1's ability to absorb hits and self-recover in seconds represents a serious engineering achievement that transcends impressive demonstrations and the price point, around $16,000, puts it in a category that research labs and startups can actually purchase, not just admire from conference presentations. The philosophy behind the punishment. Unitree's approach reflects broader Chinese industrial strategy, iterate in public, gather feedback constantly, fix problems rapidly, and ship again. This isn't the glamorous part of robotics development, but it's how machines transition from laboratory curiosities to field-ready products. The company already sells robot dogs working in defense, security, and research applications with thousands of units deployed globally. They've learned the unglamorous but essential skills of shipping, supporting, and patching robots operating in uncontrolled environments. That operational experience is how the G1 arrived so refined, 
It's part of a developmental lineage that started with robots walking uncertainly in Chinese laboratories and evolved into acrobatic machines performing at national festivals. The engineering team tests by breaking things, literally and repeatedly, then hardening hardware until it survives conditions that would destroy less robust designs. This methodology isn't elegant or stage-worthy, but it's how robots mature from demonstrations to deployable products. There's also a concerning darker angle that emerged recently, revealing vulnerabilities that come with rapid iteration and market flooding. Security researchers discovered a serious Bluetooth vulnerability in Unitree robots that allowed hackers to gain root access and potentially infect other robots within wireless range, a nightmare scenario where one compromised unit could scan and hijack nearby machines, forming what amounts to a walking botnet. Additionally, the G1 was found transmitting telemetry back to servers in China every few minutes, raising legitimate concerns about data security and operational transparency. Unitree promised updates and improved security practices, but this incident crystallized real concerns about trust when robots can walk, see, connect to the internet, and potentially be controlled remotely. Still, security vulnerabilities can be patched through software updates, core physics and mechanical design cannot. And on fundamental robustness, the G1 currently demonstrates clear advantages. The way it handles falls, absorbs impacts, and recovers rapidly are precisely the capabilities that make robots useful in unpredictable real-world environments rather than just impressive in controlled demonstrations. Tesla's Elegant Intelligence Tesla's latest demonstration showed something fundamentally different. Optimus moving with timing and coordination that looked much closer to real-time human behavior than the obviously sped-up videos the company released previously. The robot mirrored a human partner, entered martial arts stances, and started responding to simulated attacks with visible coordination between upper body and legs. The movement wasn't flawless, but it was genuinely fluid in ways previous demonstrations weren't. The balance corrections were smaller and more natural, the footwork more deliberate and purposeful. This was Optimus learning control through motion, powered entirely by onboard A, I, rather than remote operators hiding behind curtains. An important distinction because it means the robot is generating its own decisions from sensor data in real time, not replaying pre-programmed scripts or being teleoperated. The demonstration started simple, with small movements, slow transitions, and basic footwork, then built progressively into defensive blocks and repositioning. For the first time, Optimus appeared to understand rhythm and weight transfer in ways that suggest emerging mastery of dynamic balance. Tesla didn't showcase much use of the hands, though. They remained relatively stiff throughout, probably because the promised 22 degrees of Freedom Finger upgrade isn't ready for demonstration yet. Still, for a robot that once struggled with slow, jerky steps that looked painfully mechanical, the improvement is undeniable. This was a humanoid beginning to display natural timing in movement, the industrial divide. The competition between Optimus and G1 mirrors a larger industrial and philosophical divide that extends far beyond individual robot capabilities. Tesla represents America's hardware-software hybrid model, vertically integrated, closed ecosystem built around artificial intelligence as the control core. Everything from computer vision to reinforcement learning to motor control is developed in-house and tightly integrated. Unitree represents China's open, fast-iterating, cost-driven model. Flood the market with capable hardware, gather massive amounts of feedback from actual deployments, fix problems rapidly based on real-world data, and ship improvements continuously. Both approaches are valid and have proven successful in different contexts. The fundamental difference is speed and tolerance for imperfection. China iterates publicly, accepting that early products will have flaws that get exposed and fixed through deployment. The United States polishes privately, preferring to release products only when they meet higher standards of refinement. One philosophy grows through productive chaos and rapid feedback loops. The other grows through careful refinement and controlled advancement. And it's not just Tesla versus Unitree anymore. The competitive landscape is expanding rapidly. Meta has entered the robotics arena with Metabot, built on an open AI platform, designed to serve as a universal control system for any robot body. Amazon's Frontier AI research team is experimenting with a framework called Omni Retarget that enables humanoids to copy human movements from just a few video demonstrations, eliminating lengthy programming cycles. They even trained a Unitree G1 to perform parkour movements and carry boxes across uneven terrain after analyzing just a handful of human examples. The Platform Strategy 
In that sense, the G1 is rapidly becoming a favorite experimental platform for multiple research laboratories. Its hardware is flexible enough for varied applications, its software stack open enough to encourage experimentation, and its body durable enough to survive the repeated failures inherent in training processes. This creates a network effect that could prove more valuable than any single technical advantage. When multiple teams build improvements on top of the same hardware platform, collective progress accelerates exponentially. Tesla still holds significant advantages in vision systems and ecosystem integration. The Optimus project is built on top of Tesla's entire AI infrastructure, the same technological backbone that trains its autonomous vehicles. The cameras, computer vision algorithms, and reinforcement learning loops are all part of the same developmental pipeline. When that ecosystem fully matures, it could give Optimus massive advantages in perception and planning capabilities. Imagine factory robots running on the same data infrastructure that simultaneously trains and improves millions of autonomous vehicles. The potential scale and sophistication of that integration is genuinely staggering. Yet there's an irony here that could prove strategically significant. Tesla's biggest strength, its tightly controlled, vertically integrated ecosystem, could simultaneously become a limitation. Unitree's openness and affordability are enabling other companies to build innovative solutions on top of its robot hardware. Amazon, research universities, and smaller startups are already using G1 platforms to test advanced AI control systems. It's evolving into a platform, not just a product. If Meta's universal robot brain eventually plugs into different physical bodies, the G1 would likely be among the first to benefit from that integration. That's how technological ecosystems grow and achieve dominance. Not by owning every component, but by being present everywhere and enabling others to innovate. The challenge nobody's solved, yet. Durability and locomotion control aside, the next enormous challenge for both companies is dexterous manipulation. Hands with genuine precision are what separate functional humanoids from impressive walking sculptures. Optimus hasn't demonstrated it yet beyond basic grasping, and Unitree's demonstrations have carefully avoided showing detailed manipulation entirely. When either company demonstrates precise, AI-driven grasping of irregular objects, cables, tools, fragile components, objects with complex geometries, that will be the genuine inflection point when humanoids transition from fascinating demonstrations to truly useful machines. Right now, both are still primarily focused on movement and stability, which makes strategic sense because without reliable balance, sophisticated hands become meaningless. Then there's the fundamental question of purpose and deployment strategy. Tesla's goal is transparent and focused, automate its own production lines first before selling robots externally. That approach ensures extensive real-world testing while keeping inevitable failures private rather than public relations disasters. Unitree's strategy is broader and more aggressive. Sell to anyone who can use them, from research laboratories to logistics firms to security operations. It's a volume-based strategy where more robots deployed means more feedback collected, which enables faster iteration cycles. It's the same formula that made China dominate consumer drone manufacturing over the past decade. So here's what's actually happening while most people just watch impressive robot videos. Two fundamentally different industrial philosophies are competing to define the future of humanoid robotics, and the outcome will reshape manufacturing, logistics, and potentially every industry relying on human labor. Tesla is building smarter robots with tighter AI integration and more elegant movement. Unitree is building more robots with greater durability and faster iteration cycles. Tesla is teaching machines to think carefully before they move. Unitree is teaching machines to survive whatever happens after they move. It's intelligence versus instinct, design refinement versus operational endurance, closed ecosystems versus open platforms. Both approaches matter enormously, but endurance and deployability tend to win the early competitive rounds while elegant intelligence requires longer maturation timelines. In pure technical terms right now, the G1 seems closer to genuine real-world deployment, despite its security vulnerabilities that need addressing. It can already perform and recover in environments that aren't carefully staged or controlled. Tesla's Optimus still feels like a brilliant concept, steadily inching toward commercial readiness, but not quite there yet. In the longer term, Tesla's production scale and AI infrastructure could completely rewrite the robotics market. But right now, Unitree's simplicity, price point, and mechanical robustness make it more immediately adaptable to varied applications. This entire competition also crystallizes the larger industrial divide between the United States and China. America 
is building robots that are smarter and more sophisticated. China is building more robots, period. The gap between impressive demonstrations and actual deployment is closing rapidly, and each new video makes that trajectory more obvious. The winner might not be the robot that moves most elegantly or thinks most intelligently. It might be the robot that keeps functioning after it's been kicked, pushed and knocked down repeatedly. And right now, that's the G1's specialty.